we want to consider aging a disease, so the NIH will in fact fund it and put money and energy into the research of curing aging as a disease because it is the reason that we have all of the symptoms that we die of, things that you've been told are diseases on their own, and you can consider them that if you like. Cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, these are all due to cellular degeneration. Cellular degeneration underlies biological aging and is the master disease. All of these things that we've batted at as symptoms, uh, Alzheimer's, cancer, heart disease, etc., are symptoms of cellular aging and cannot be cured on their own. In fact, with our science, you will look younger again. Normal is a situational opinion. It's really important that we define that. In 1850, when the first immunizations came around, much like how gene therapy is coming now, people rallied in the streets. They said that, you know, this was against uh, their beliefs. They thought the government was interfering with their life, but we're going to see what the advent of antibiotics and immunizations did to help these people. Life static, without any change right now, all the number ones will die of heart disease, all the number twos will die of cancer, and all the number threes will die of nephropathies, lung disorders, frailty, and, and various other things. And that's not acceptable. Uh, this, this is considered normal. As you know, people out there in the world will say, well, this is the normal way to die. But actually, the, the great thing is what's normal for science is to overcome these things. Uh, I started to realize that it, actually it was time to fight a new war. Uh, we could fight what I call the first old man's war and save our children and save ourselves in the meantime. By curing aging, we can help many of the diseases that children have, including cancer and, and, and various other things. If you actually Google uh, gene therapy, you'll see that gene therapy is considered an experimental treatment. It's an experimental um, form of medicine. I would say that pharmaceuticals are still an experiment and that they're failing us. I'm not saying not to take your pharmaceuticals, okay? So right now you might need them to get to the next step, but I'll just say that, in fact, I don't buy what the FDA is telling us about it being safe and, and efficient. I think that um, actually more people will die this year taking their pharmaceuticals as prescribed than will die in the next 20 years of gene therapy. Every hour of your life, you're accumulating cellular damage from birth until the point you get the diagnosis of the thing that will kill you. We want to change that. We want to change everything, and we're going to do it in a very interesting way. As a matter of fact, we know enough that we can do this safe and effectively. In order to get something through the FDA, I would have to take one of my therapies, therapies that I collect from these masterminds of science to bring to my company, to bring to you, I would have to go and raise almost a billion dollars. There's one gene therapy that's been passed in the EU, it's for macular degeneration, and you can get that therapy, you can actually go to Europe and get that therapy now. It's $1.3 million to save your eyesight. How do we actually change this paradigm? How do we change things to make things available now and in a way that we can actually afford them? Well, what we do is we burn and raise everything to the ground and we start over. This is one of my favorite cartoons ever. He says, the mouse, the rat says to the person, I'm going home today. They cured, cured me using this miracle drug. And I'm afraid it'll be years before it's approved for humans. <laughs> Not only would it take me a billion dollars to get this through the U.S. government, it would take about 15 years of testing. And when I'm looking out there, I'm seeing people that don't want to wait 15 years, okay? This is a paradigm of death that we have sort of accepted. And I know that this group hasn't and I haven't but this is what the world has accepted. We see mouse and rat studies all the time that give us great hope and we're dying waiting for a cure. That we will now move into what is considered on their behalf experimental medicine, but what in fact has a lot of safety and efficacy behind it. We're building gene therapies to treat aging as a disease. <laughs> And what that means is that we can mitigate all of the diseases of old age if we're successful, and we think we will be. DNA makes RNA, and RNA makes protein, and protein makes you. And we have things called serotypes. And a serotype is a type of that virus that will actually target specific tissues. So we can deliver to the brain, to your skin, to your organs with different serotypes. And this is a really special technology.
One of the first things that we want to do is target Alzheimer's disease. This is a special gene therapy because it's the only gene therapy that has actually reversed aging in animals. The only gene therapy that has reversed aging in every human tissue it's ever been applied to. We should be taking people who are terminally ill and they should have their right to try yeah. therapies. <laughs> we want to mitigate their disease and actually come back to the USA with our results and prove age reversal. 90% of the population has atherosclerosis by the age of 30, and that is plaques in your arteries. This is why we get heart disease. Heart disease you saw back on the graph kills one third of the population, and if you don't die of something else, you will die of heart disease. We have a gene therapy that um, appears to reverse atherosclerosis. We, we already have it in humans. Its side effects are increased muscle mass, stamina. <laughs> My doctor that I work with that is our lead doctor in BioViva took this gene therapy five years ago. He's in very good shape. He has no heart issues. He has no, no cholesterol issues. He has cholesterol. You need cholesterol in your body or you would die, but he has no um, atherosclerotic plaques. He runs extremely fast. He's extremely healthy, and um, the world didn't, did not know that until I said that. This gene therapy is in clinical trials here in the U.S. for muscular dystrophy in children. Unfortunately, you would have to have muscular dystrophy to get it if it's passed through the NIH, okay, or through the FDA. Um, in animal studies that he did, the animals all lived 40% longer stem cell therapy. When you move stem cells around the body, what happens is, is you kind of tear them out of one region, you shove them into another region, and they all start signaling. Most of them leave the area, and yet you have regenerative effects. When they start signaling, they start talking to all the tissues around them, and they tell those tissues, tissues to start healing. We have built a gene therapy around that, and it actually may be a, a cure for ALS, Parkinson's, rheumatoid arthritis, and macular degeneration. So treating aging as a disease, how do we want to do this? We want to lengthen telomeres. We want to reverse atherosclerosis. We want to clear the misfolded proteins. We want to clear senescent cells. We want to re-strengthen muscles. And we want to reboot the immune system. And that last statement, this is really important. Uh, rebooting the immune system is so important. Remember I told you that children get cancer cells? They get cancer cells and they clear them. As a matter of fact, most of your life you have some cancer cells developing. What happens is your immune system gets old, it no longer targets them, and you get sick. So I'm not saying this is a cure for cancer. Cancer has been a very consistent in our, in our genome for a long time, but this very well may reduce the incidence to small percentages so that, in fact, cancer is no longer normal. I think this, that they will be given like immunizations. In the future, I am hoping that governments will work with us and these things will actually be free. I would very much like to put myself out of business because that's better business for the world. Gene therapy has the properties of being the first regenerative and uh, preventative medicine in one. Preventing autoimmune disorders, we definitely want to do this. I hope that there's a day when, you know, sick children are, are something of the past. Enhancing therapies, we're already looking at a cognitive enhancement therapy. University in Beijing, uh, China, is now running the human genome against intelligence. There's nothing wrong with that, but the rest of the world won't touch it. We're glad that they touch it, because if we can make you stronger, faster, smarter, more visually acute, we're going to do it. As a matter of fact, I've talked to people at NASA about what we're doing, and um, this is one thing that they want to know if we have, is radiation and resistance. Actually, NASA is a huge proponent of living a long time. Because they need their astronauts to live a long time. So what is the world impact? I think that you guys know what the world impact is here. It's big. But how do you uh, get your arsenal against people who are going to give you uh, trouble with this, okay? Fertility and increased lifespan. In 1960, when this first chart was made, world leaders, thinkers, they came together at the Club of Rome, and they said that by the year 2000, the world would be doomed. <laughs> that we were going to be doomed because we would have too many people on the planet. Well, they were wrong. <laughs> and the numbers have be been rerun, and actually, 
I can, it goes up for a while, and by the year 2100, it's estimated that even with advanced technology, there will be less people on the earth than there is now. As lifespan goes up and people are living better, they actually have less children. And do I love children? Yes, I do love children. And do I want children in the world? Yes, I do want children in the world. That's why I got into this. I got into this to cure childhood disease. People against uh, you know, a decline in population often are not very awakened to the idea that children are starving right now. Okay, we, we can't actually afford what's happening right now. We have more and more people will live to the age of 120 and yet they're retiring at 65. And, they're, and they need to retire, they're retiring with illness, the inability to work. If we can put these people back to work in young, youthful, healthy bodies, it would be so good for the environment. <laughs> and the economy and everything else because we'll be working on new problems, new problems that will solve issues that we haven't solved in the past. I believe it was Bill Andrews' book that he said that actually with all the money the government would save, having all of these di diseases eradicated, that everyone could be paid by the government to take a 10 year retirement in between starting the second half of your life. And this is saying that we would live to 120. You know, we, we, we work really hard to keep our message that we're just trying to make healthy people. And then, of course, you know, you're the group who, who actually understands a very important question. If you're healthy, what do you die of? You don't. <laughs> The government this year is going to spend approximately $13 billion on battling the symptoms of aging with only two, millions of, two billion of that dollars going to aging research itself. Uh, that's a problem. And as a matter of fact, this doesn't account for the trillions of dollars that they spend uh, treating people with disease and paying for you know, people who are infirmed and on palliative care. If we even took all of this $13 billion, and gave it to small biotech companies, we could only potentially get 13 new therapies through the FDA. And most of them would be sunk, even if they were promising. So we want to change the paradigm of death because it means everything about how we live. We want to change what people consider normal because normal is a dangerous, slippery slope. So don't listen to anyone telling you what normal is. We're about to change that dramatically. One thing I do want you to hold in and remember, gene therapy offers both preventative and regenerative medicine. It's very important. These therapies should pay for themselves by mitigating all the symptoms of biological aging and the governments and you will save a lot of money. <laughs>